What if you could legally steal your competitors' customers using Google Ads? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it with proven strategies that have stood the test of time. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Daryl and I've run a Google Ads agency called Big Flare for over 12 years now. And competitor targeting is one of our bread and butter strategies. Today, I'm going to show you the exact playbook we use to hijack competitor demand and turn it into paid orders. The search terms to bid on, the angles to beat their offers, the landing page tweaks that convert, and the one metric that tells you if you're printing profit or burning cash. Keep watching because later on I'll show you a little known Pmax hack that almost no one else uses that allows you to go way beyond normal search competitor campaigns. Now with that said, let's dive right in. First up, you need to understand that people searching for your competitors are already warm. They know the products, they're actively searching for them online, and they're potentially ready to buy. That kind of audience is highly valuable, which is why so many brands compete for it by targeting competitor keywords and audiences. Now, if you're not running these campaigns yourself, your competitors most likely are, and they could be capturing traffic that should have been yours. So take this example. If you Google Monday, the project management platform, you'll see that another company, Lark Suite, has its ad right at the top of the search results. Their ad doesn't just say, hey, we're here too. It shows how Lark Suite recognized a common complaint about Monday.com, that it's too expensive, and use that insight in their ad by positioning themselves as the more affordable alternative. That's a perfect example of how competitor targeting can work. You show up when someone is searching for your rival and you highlight why you are the better choice. Now, Google does allow you to bid on competitor brand names, but there are a couple of important rules to follow. First, you cannot use their brand name in your ad copy if it's a registered trademark. Technically, if it's not trademarks, you could include it, but I generally recommend avoiding it either way. It keeps you out of trouble and avoids creating bad blood with other brands. Second, you can't imply any sort of partnership or official connection with your competitor. For example, you couldn't say something like officialmonday.com partner if that's not true. You need to make it clear that you're an alternative and not pretending to be them. So yes, there are a couple of rules to respect there, but as long as you stay compliant, you can still tap into competitor traffic and make it work for you. All right, let's dive into the step-by-step -step process so you can start stealing your competitor sales right away. Now, the first step is to properly research your competitors. Now, you can skip this step and just go straight over to building competitor campaigns if you already know exactly which competitors you want to target, but I don't recommend doing that. Research shows you who's really advertising against you and how. And what you find out during the research phase could mean the difference between a highly profitable campaign and a money waster campaign. So let's start with the Auction Insights report in your Google Ads account. From the main view, go to Campaigns, then Insights and Reports, and then Auction Insights. Click on the date and choose a longer date range, like 90 days up till today. A longer range cuts out short-term volatility and gives you a clearer picture of the real market. Below the date, you can also switch between search ads and shopping ads. For most e-commerce brands, it's best to focus on shopping, so let's use that view. Here you can see the websites you're competing with in Google. Next. Click on the impression share column to sort from biggest to smallest. Impression share shows how often your ads appeared compared to how often they could have appeared. The competitors with a smaller impression share to ours are our closest rivals, while the brands at the very top, like Home Depot in this example, are usually the market leader dominating the most auctions. Now look at overlap rate. This tells us how often another advertiser's ad appeared in the same auction as ours. For example, a 76% overlap with Wayfair means that in about three out of four auctions where our ad appeared, Wayfair's ad was also there, so we're competing head to head most of the time. Finally, let's check outranking share. This shows us how often our ad ranked above another advertiser's or showed when theirs didn't. For example, if our outranking share against Lowe's is 38%, it means our ad appeared above theirs or in auctions that they totally missed 38% of the time. Now, out of all these numbers, the one to pay the closest attention to is the impression share column. If your percentage is low, it means your ads aren't showing up as often as they could. So you may need to improve your product feed, work on your ad relevance, raise your bids, or adjust your budget to stay more competitive. Now, once you've checked who's showing up against us in Auction Insights, the next step is to see 
which competitor brands people are actually searching for. And for that, we'll use Keyword Planner. So from your main view in Google Ads, go over to Tools, Planning, and then go Keyword Planner. And once you're there, click on Discover New Keywords. Type in your main product or category keywords, and I'm gonna type in garden furniture here and outdoor furniture, and then click Get Results. The tool will show us the average monthly searches for those terms and their close variance. So click on the average monthly searches to sort the results in descending order of search volume so the highest volume terms rise to the top. A lot of the time those related searches will include competitor brand names giving us a clear picture of which brands are most popular with shoppers in our market. Now, if you want to focus only on competitor brand terms, what you can do is you can click over here on the right, refine keywords, go to the brand or non-brand tab, and then remove non-brand keywords by unchecking this box here. Now your list will be much cleaner, showing just the competitor brand names that are actually worth targeting. And that's the real value here. Keyword Planner doesn't just show you search numbers, it shows you where the demand is. By spotting which brands get the most searches, you'll know exactly who your biggest competitors are in the eyes of your customers. Next, what you can do is go to Google search and then simply type in the main keyword for your products and see who shows up in the top paid results. Anyone paying to appear for the same searches as you is a direct competitor in ads. So from there, on your competitor's ad, click on these three dots over here and then click on see more ads. This is the Google Ads Transparency Center and you'll be able to see all active ads that the competitor brand is running across all of Google's channels. You can also select a date range, specific Google platform and ad format like image, text or video. So this is gonna show you their messaging, their offers and how aggressively they're advertising. You can also spot patterns like which products they push the most, the design of their creatives and whether they test different angles or just stick to one main message. All of this gives you insights which you can later use to position your own ads more effectively against them. Now let's double check the same competitor on Meta using the Facebook ad library. So go to facebook.com slash ads slash library and choose your country or region and then set the ad category to all ads. Search for the competitor by typing in their brand name. Now once you select the competitor from the dropdown, it will show you all their active meta ads. You can now use filters to narrow by language, platform, media type, active status, and even a specific date range to see what campaigns were running during a certain period. Look for patterns here as well, which products they promote the most, what offers they repeat, and how often they refresh creatives. Save a few strong examples to build a swipe file of hooks, offers, and call to actions. Remember, the tool won't show you budgets or targeting. It's only for studying messaging and creative direction. Use it as inspiration to highlight your own unique selling points and not for direct copying. Once you've studied your competitor's ads and offers, the next step is to put that knowledge into action by building your own dedicated search campaign to target competitor keywords. You want to set up a dedicated campaign just for competitor targeting, and if you want to go after more than one competitor, make sure to separate ad groups by competitor. That way, your data stays clean, you can clearly see which competitor strategy is working, and you can tailor your ad copy to highlight exactly how you're better than that specific competitor. For e-commerce, there are basically two core types of competitor keywords that you'll want to use. First, you have competitor brand keywords. This is where you directly target your competitor's brand name on its own. Use this if they are a direct competitor and you're selling exactly the same product or range of products. For example, if you sell home goods, you might target Bed Bath & Beyond as an exact match keyword. Shoppers searching this brand are clearly in the market for home products, which means your store is a strong alternative and you have all the same products. Secondly, you might need to go for a competitor brand plus product type keyword. This is when your competitor sells a wider range of products than you, or they sell slightly different products in some categories. So someone searching their brand might be looking for what you have, but they might actually be looking for one of the other products that you don't have. So in this case, pair their brand name with the specific product keyword. For example, let's say you only sell dining tables. Instead of targeting Bed Bath & Beyond, you might target Bed Bath & Beyond dining table. This way you're only paying for clicks from people who are in the market for what you actually have. To get the most out of this campaign, make sure you're filtering out the wrong traffic from the start. 
add negative keywords right away from the beginning so you don't waste budget on irrelevant searches. And that way, every click you pay for has a much better chance of turning into a customer. When writing your ad copy, point out your advantages in relation to your competitors and show why your product stands out as the better choice by emphasizing your unique selling points. This is where all the research you did in Google Ads Transparency Center and the Facebook Ads Library really starts to pay off because if you notice that competitors don't offer free returns or have slow shipping or they have weak guarantees, now is the time to highlight how your brand solves those gaps. Take what they're missing and turn it into your strongest message so customers immediately see why your product is the better choice. Remember the Monday example? we showed earlier, well, Lark Suite's ad showed up right at the top, but it wasn't just showing up. It was smartly using a known weakness of Monday, which is their high price, and positioning themselves as the cheaper alternative. And that's exactly how you should think about your competitor campaigns. Step in front of the customer at the right moment and use your competitor's gaps to make your brand the more obvious choice. And just a reminder that I don't usually recommend putting your competitor's brand name right into your ad copy, like Lark Suite have done here, even if their brand isn't a trademark term. It's usually just easier to avoid the drama and potential bad blood. Now, once you win the click, the job isn't done yet. You need to welcome people on a landing page that feels like the next natural step after the ad. Now that page, should expand on the message from your ad and clearly show why your product is the better choice compared to the competition. Ideally, you'll create a custom landing page designed just for this campaign, but if that's not possible, make sure to at least choose the page from your store that best matches the ad's promise and highlights your strongest advantages. Now you've seen how a dedicated search campaign can let you directly capture competitor traffic with precise keywords. But what if you wanted to expand beyond search and let Google's AI help you find even more of your competitors' customers? That's where Performance Max can potentially come in. Most e-commerce brands are already running Pmax campaigns, but very few of them are guiding them with the right signals. So here's how to use signals to push Pmax towards competitor traffic. From the campaign screen, click into your Pmax campaign. On the left sidebar, check that you are viewing the Asset Groups section. Click the plus button and create a new asset group. At the top of the setup window, you'll see a section called search themes. In here, enter your competitor keywords and their brand plus product keywords that you want to target like this. Now you can actually add up to 50 search themes and I've just done a few examples here, but you can add way more when doing this for real. These search terms tell Google that you want to go after people who are actively searching for those brands and these products. Now scroll down to additional signals, click it open and choose the interests and detailed demographics. Click into the search bar and select the new segment option. Name this segment competitors. In the first box, people with any of these interests or purchase intentions, add competitor brand names and the competitor plus product phrases that show high intent like this. Again, I just put a few examples here, but you can feel free to do way more when you're doing this for real. This is now going to tell Pmax to go after people that it thinks are in the market to buy your competitor's stuff right now. Now in the second box down here, people who browse websites similar to, you can paste your competitor URLs directly in like this. This is gonna tell people to go after people who browse your competitor's website, plus other people who look a lot like those people. Now click save and you have built a custom competitor segment that targets both competitor purchase intent and competitor site visitors. Continue setting up your asset groups as you normally would, writing your ad copy, adding images, videos, and the right landing page. And then this asset group is now guided to show ads to people who are actively searching for or visiting your competitors. Now keep in mind, Performance Max won't actually stick only to the audiences you provide. It always looks to expand a bit wider than the audiences that you provide so it can get extra conversions. But when you add competitor-based segments like this, you're guiding it in the right direction so more of your budget goes towards people who are actively considering your competitors. You can also use these same types of competitor audiences in display, demand gen, or YouTube campaigns to get even more visibility. Now, I wouldn't actually recommend setting up these campaign types just to target your competitors. Rather, if you're already running these campaign types, adding these competitor audiences can be a nice additional audience to try alongside whatever audiences you're already using over there. 
In just a moment, I'm going to show you how to optimize the performance of your competitor campaigns. But first, let me quickly let you know that if you're stuck or struggling with Google Ads and you want to hire someone just to manage it all for you, then look no further than my Google Ads agency, bigflare.com. We're a boutique agency that's been in business for over 12 years. We've generated over $150 million in revenue for our clients, and we've had some great client results like the ones that you can see right here. If that sounds interesting to you, then hit the link in the description below this video to book a time to talk with me directly. We can start by doing a free no obligation audit of your Google Ads account where I'll show you exactly what needs to change and why. All right, with that said, let's go back to talking about optimizing your competitors' campaigns. Once you've launched your search competitors campaign, it's important to give it time to gather data and optimize its performance correctly as you go along. So here's how to do that step by step. Start with a controlled budget. Don't throw big money in on day one. Put in enough to collect meaningful data, but not so much that you risk wasting your entire budget. Think of this as a sort of testing phase. Track the right metrics at the right time. At the beginning, focus on simple numbers like click-through rate. Are people clicking on your ads? Conversion rate, are they actually buying anything? Cost per click, how much are you actually paying for each visitor? Now keep an eye on this one because high cost per clicks can quickly eat into your budget, while lower cost per clicks will give you a lot more room for testing and scale. After a while, once you start seeing steady traffic, then you can shift your main focus to return on ad spend, ROAS how much revenue you are actually getting for every dollar spent. As you go along, keep cleaning the campaign with negative keywords. Regularly add negative keywords to block irrelevant searches and save your budget. If possible, update them daily. If not, a couple of times per week is fine. Test your ads. Run A-B tests with at least two versions of your ad. Change the USP, headline, and offer, or angle. Over time, this kind of testing will show you which messages resonate most with customers and bring in the highest sales. Upgrade your landing page. Your landing page should feel like the natural next step after the ad. So make sure it matches the promise in the ad, includes the main product keywords, and explains your unique selling points. The clearer and easier the page is, the more likely people are to buy. Optimize your quality score. In competitor campaigns, you'll never reach a perfect quality score because you're bidding on someone else's brand terms. But you can still improve it. Getting a five or a six here is actually really good, so aim for that. The way to reach that is with a strong click-through rate, a smooth landing page, and as much ad relevance as possible. Even small improvements can lower your cost per click and make your campaign more profitable. And then last but not least, scale only after consistency. Once your ROAS is steady, then start scaling your budget slowly. A good rule is to raise it by no more than 20% at a time, about once per week. If you scale too fast, Google will push your campaign back into learning phase, which can hurt performance. So slow and steady increases are the safest way to grow while keeping your results profitable. All right, we covered a lot today, so if you need one thing to focus on next, it's this. Pick just one competitor, launch a focus test campaign, with just one ad group targeting that one competitor. Now the volume here is not going to be huge, it's gonna be quite small, and you do need to target more than one competitor overall, but at least you've got the ball rolling and now you can start adding more competitors as you go along. And one thing that's really important with competitor campaigns is writing really top-notch ad copy. So I highly recommend you check out this video right up here. In it, I dive into ad copy strategy and show you exactly how to write ads that turn clicks into sales. Check it out, I think it'll be really helpful for you and I'll hope to see you on the next one. Cheers.